Hey everybody, this is Jeff Hedrick with Keep Supply. I'm here today with our special guest, Jared Clark from My Safety, to talk a little bit about some ammonia vacuum pumps. Jared, will you tell us a little bit about some common applications for ammonia vacuum pumps? Some common applications of using this, if it's a dedicated pump out system or the vacuum pump would be annual service on compressors. If you're doing filter changes or coalescers, things like that, you wanna have a vacuum pump. It should almost be like that tool in your toolbox that you bring with you anytime you're gonna open up the system. If you're gonna open up the atmosphere and let those non-condensed pools and moisture into the system, you're gonna to wanna to have these vacuum pumps. Another great example is if you're gonna work on an evaporator and replace a valve on that. If you open it up and allow all the, the main pipe headers and the evaporator equalize the atmosphere, all that's full of moisture and non-condensed pools and you wanna have that vacuum pump available to remove those things before you put ammonia back in the equipment. So Jared, it sounds like there's a lot of best practices when utilizing these pumps. Do you have any pro tips you'd recommend here? If you read these manuals, they'll tell you a lot of great information. Both of the owner's manuals recommend changing the oil after every use, but it really depends on how much you're using the vacuum pump though. If you use it for a long duration, say a few hours, and it's a big project, you're pulling out a lot of like air and non-condensables, you might actually have to change that oil during the middle of the vacuum pool. So it's really crucial to make sure you have oil with you and available if you're going to big jobs. If you start seeing the oil turn to like a milky white, it's how you're kind of being able to identify that they're starting to get moisture in that oil, which is bad for the vacuum pump because it uses that oil to lubricate the rotary vane, uh, compressor inside of it. It helps lubricate the bearings and everything else like that as well. So if you let that oil get too milky, it can destroy a vacuum pump. So it's really important to stay on top of those oil changes. So my assumption is there's a lot of customers that are dependent on their air purger to be removing some non-condensables. There's a mindset of, why do I need the vacuum pump to remove those non-condensables before putting ammonia back on if I have my purger? But one of the key things is if you do uh, moisture content or water testing, cold flow testing is kind of the name for it, on an annual basis and you keep in that moisture in your system, it's probably coming from people not taking the time to pull out those non-condensables from the system. But if you're not pulling that air out before you put it back on, you're relying on that purger to get the air out, which it will do that, but what if the purger ain't working right? What if this was a service contractor that came and did a job one day and then leaves, but now the facility, they had a problem with the purger and now they got a bunch of air still in the system. So you wanted to take advantage of removing that air and the moisture, because even like the HVAC R industry, they don't get that kind of, I guess, break from having to pull out non-condensables. That's part of their job. They have to pull it down to a deep vacuum and microns and remove those non-condensables and moisture from the system. And we should treat it the same with our systems as well. So it sounds like our objective here is a deep vacuum. How do you know when you've accomplished that? Well, it really depends on where you're gonna hook up the hose on the piece of equipment. First is kind of your first determination. Let's say a compressor package is gonna be the scenario here. We'll hook up our hose on service port on the coalescer and the compressor package. And wherever you locate your pressure gauge is really an important thing to keep in mind because if you put it like on a T where the hose is connected on the service port, it's gonna give you a reading of what the vacuum pump is doing, but not really tell you what the vacuum is in the whole piece of equipment. So you wanna find what's the most achievable point farthest away from where your hose is to take that pressure reading. And to add on to that, what type of gauge you're using too is really important. If you use a regular like analog compound gauge, if you see the needle on it, a great analogy here. If I use a tape measure to cut a piece of wood, it only gives me about 1 16th of an inch of accuracy. But if I'm a machinist and I want to machine a piece of uh, bar or material or metal, I want an accuracy of like 1 thousandth of an inch. So there's a big difference in the accuracy of what a, like a digital pressure gauge that can read microns versus what you're using an analog gauge for to measure the depth of a vacuum. You want to make sure that gauge is also at the farthest point from that vacuum pump to determine what is the depth of vacuum for the whole piece of equipment. Just like if you're gonna go do oil drain, if you go to grab these pumps to do a job task that requires opening up the ammonia refrigeration system, that means you gotta have at least your minimum PPE with you. Let's cover what the minimum PPE is. When using a vacuum pump, the likeliness to be exposed to ammonia vapor is high. So at a minimum, we recommend wearing an air purifying respirator at APR. You also wanna make sure that the chemical cartridge is for ammonia and it's not expired. Lastly, this is personal protective equipment, so you should also be properly fit tested for this. Now we're gonna give you an overview of both these ammonia vacuum pumps. We're gonna start with the Navac MP12DA1. Inside your box, you will have your product manual. It does feature a modern design with KF25 fittings on both the intake and the discharge size. It has a gas ballast, a flow rate of 12 CFM, and an ultimate vacuum rate of five micron. On this side, you have an oil sight glass as well as an oil drain. 
and on the other side you have a recessed power switch. It weighs in at 32 pounds, but it includes a lifting point. Now we're gonna take a look at the Bullet X 93530 from Yellow Jacket. Inside your box, you will have a manual, one quart of oil, shoulder strap, and pump exhaust filter. It has an all metal durable design with MPT thread connections, a flow rate of eight CFM, and an ultimate vacuum of 15 micron. On this end, you have an oil sight glass and drain. On the other end, you have your power switch. And it weighs in at 26.8 pounds. <laughs>